and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look an example for the Enterprise Fund. When I covered the Enterprise Fund, I said, I'm not going to cover the Enterprise Fund because what they use is accrual accounting. But although they used accrual accounting, I believe there's a few things that we need to point out. Although I pointed them out in the original lecture, but I would like to work an example to point them out specifically. So this way you will see how the journal entry work and how do, how do we prepare financial statement. Now, when I work this example, the example that I'm going to be working next, I'm going to first prepare the journal entries. Then I'm going to prepare the financial statement. So what I suggest you do, if you want to follow along, create a general ledger, which is a T account for every account I mentioned. For example, if I mention cash restricted, we're going to debit this account. Make sure you have a cash restricted account. When I say, well, we're going to have a bonds payable, make sure you create an account for bonds payable and keep track of your accounts because at the end of the period, I'm going to prepare the financial statement. So let's go ahead and get started with this example. Then we, would, we will prepare the financial statement later. So the Green Hill um, Water uh, District was established on January 1st to provide to provide water services to a suburban development. It accounts for its operation in, a, in an enterprise fund during the year it engaged in the following transaction. Now, the first transaction they did, they issued a 600, uh, I'm sorry, 6 million dollar of revenue bond. Now, what is a revenue bond? Revenue bond means the payment for the bond is coming from the revenue of the enterprise. So the revenue of the enterprise is backing up the bond, backing up the bond. We have revenue bond and we have a general obligation bond. So we have the other type of bonds are called a general obligation or just GOs, general obligation. And those general obligation are, are, are backed by the good faith credit, by the credit of the government, which is not the enterprise. For example, if this is for the city of Philadelphia, if this enterprise is for the city of Philadelphia, the credit worthiness of the city of Philadelphia will back up the general obligation bond. So we have revenue bond. Maybe I think I have a slide. Maybe I can show you real quick. So we have, there, there we go. We have revenue bonds, which is this is a revenue bond, and we have a general obligation bond the full faith and credit of the government, which is the tax and authority. Now, one more thing I'm going to add to this, uh, to this, I'm going to say that I'm going to say that they issued the bond, uh, they issued the bond and it's uh, the money is restricted for the purchase of plant assets. So here's what's going to happen. For the first entry, they're going to debit cash. For the first entry, they're going to debit cash. And it's going to be restricted. The cash is restricted. It was six million. So this is the those are the debits, and this these are the credits. And we're going to credit bonds payable six million. All right. Now that's the first entry. The second entry. Let's look at the second transaction. The second transaction. Um, for 4.5 million, it purchased the plant and equipment of the private water company that previously serviced the area. So they purchased the existing plant and equipment. So what they did is they used some of that cash. So they bought PPE, property, plant and equipment, for 4.5 million and they use the restricted cash to purchase those that that uh, the previous company equipment 4.5 million so that's the debit and that's the credit now now the restricted cash went down and they have property planted equipment of 4.5 million the enterprise incurred this is transaction 3 the enterprise incurred half a million in cost to improve and expand its planned equipment basically they spent an additional half a million an additional half a million on property, plant, and equipment. So that's 500,000, 500K debit. And they paid from the restricted cash because they issued the bond, those bonds to buy property, plant, and equipment. So there we go, 500K, okay? Now what they did, they started work and they built the customers 1.8 million, of which 1.5 million is, is collected. So what they did now, 
as they build the client. Now they're providing actual services. And as a result, what, what's going to happen? They're going to have revenues, but not, not all of it in cash. 1.5 million in cash and the remainder is basically, it's going to be collected. Therefore, the cash collected, this is regular cash. So notice we have cash, we have cash. Notice here we have cash and we have restricted cash. Those are two different accounts. They're both assets, but one is restricted and one is, is not restricted. So we have cash. We're going to have uncollectible. The account receivable is 300,000, 300K. And the revenue, sales revenue, is 1.8 million. 1.8 million. Okay, so this is 1.5 million. I'm just using, just abbreviating, just to kind of go through the entries because the entries, I believe, they're very basic for for any accounting students. Now this entry is a little bit unique. I explained it, but this is an actual, uh, this is an actual uh, application of it, and this is tab fees. And remember when I went over the uh, when I went over the. Uh, uh, the enterprise fund, I said, one of the line that we see on the enterprise fund is something called capital contribution. And one thing is capital contribution uh, is a result of what we called tap connection fees, tap fees. So what happened? The enterprise built and collected, built customers 200,000 in tap connection fees from developers to connect them to the water system. The actual cost of the hookup is 100, uh, was 140,000. So they build them 200,000. The actual cost for what we wanted to do is 140. Therefore, 60,000 is an excess of cost. And remember, anything in excess of cost, which is 60,000, we call this capital contribution. And the 140 is regular revenue, regular operating revenue. Okay, so this is this is unique. This is something different. This is something that you did not see in your in your financial accounting or in, in your intermediate accounting course. That's why I'm taking a little bit more time to go over this entry. Okay, so basically what's going to happen, we're going to, we, we, we received in cash, so we're going to debit cash, we're going to debit cash 200,000. We're going to credit tab fees, and this is going to be operating revenues, which is part of operating revenues, that's going to be 140k. And what's going to happen, we're going to have tab fees that's considered, or fees, it doesn't matter, capital contribution of 60,000. So why the 60,000 capital contribution? But th Because that was an access. We make them pay an access of what, what it should have cost us. So that's the entry. Let me just make this a little bigger so you can see the entry. Okay. Now, also in addition to this entry, since we added one hundred and forty thousand dollar, a one hundred and forty uh, operating fee, one hundred and forty thousand to recover the cost. This was we said this is the cost, and this is the amount in excess of cost. Now, so this is considered cost. It means this is cost. This is basically addition to capital asset. This is in addition to the capital asset, to the capital asset, which is property, plant, and equipment. Okay. So what we do here is, is we debit, we're going to have to debit also property, plant, and equipment, property, plant, and equipment, 140,000. And we're going to credit cash 140,000. So simply put, the cash that we received, the cash that we received from the from this installation, the 140,000 was to connect the additional individual, the additional customers or the new customers, not the additional customers, the new customers. So what's going to happen is the 140,000, so this amount here, because it's part of the cost, cost of what? Cost of property, plant, and equipment. Therefore, we debit property, plant, and equipment 140,000. We credit cash 140,000. So this is how you deal with these type of transaction. Okay, you build the client for tap connection fees. Remember 140,000 for the cost. Therefore, what you would do is you will build the client part of the billing, 
okay part of the billing for the cost is in addition to the property plant and equipment okay now transaction six it incurred the following operating cost all paid in cash they purchase water which we're going to consider an expense they have labor and contract services interest costs this should be eighty thousand not should be eighty thousand supplies and miscellaneous sixty thousand so what's going to happen all these are expenditure so we're going to go down here and we're going to we're going to debit the expenses not yeah well expenses not expenditure so we're going to debit purchase of water the amount was 850 320 80 and 60 okay so that's going to be the debit of 320,000 that's for the water also what we did is we incurred three other uh, operating expenses here let's go ahead and list them let's see let's go back up labor and contract services labor and contract services again those are all expenses and that amount was 320 Oh, the purchase of water is 850 not 320 that's that amount is 320 uh, interest cost that's 80,000 and we have also supplies and miscellaneous they call it supplies and miscellaneous expenses And that was sixty thousand. So, and we paid all all those in cash. So the total is one million three hundred and ten. So we're gonna credit cash, one million three hundred and ten. One million three hundred and ten. Okay. Transaction six. Transaction seven. We recognize depreciation of three fifty on the capital asset. Basically, regular accounting. This is your financial accounting one hundred and one. You debit depreciation expense. 350 you credit accumulated depreciation 350 basically those are the journal entries that you would need to record typical journal entries that you would need to record for a uh, for an enterprise fund so the only entry that's a bit, little bit unusual i would say that you did not see before in your financial or in intermediate accounting is transaction five when you build a client for 200,000 for tap connection fees of which 140 was to recover the actual hookup cost which is which is part of the capital asset okay which is part of operating revenue and the access is considered capital contribution now hopefully what you did is you kept track of all your accounts basically you kept track of all your of all your general ledgers but let's go ahead and go through the accounts and identify on which statement do they go on which statement do they go for example here we can see that for example uh, those two accounts ca cash restricted and bonds goes on net position statement of net position I'm gonna abbreviate statement of net position and P property plan equipment cash restricted that's gonna be on statement of net position I'm just telling you on which statement property plan and equipment and restricted cash statement of net position cash and account receivable statement of net position 1.8 million of revenues this is the statement of revenues expenses and the changes in net position cash obviously net position statement of net position operating revenues and and ca capital contribution they go on the revenues expenses and changes in that position obviously all all of those goes into revenues expenses and changes in that position cash on the statement of net position depreciation expense on revenue expenses and statement of net position and accumulated depreciation statement of net position so i'm just telling you where does each each account goes because the next thing i'm going to do is show you the, ba the balance the net i'm going to start with the income statement so i'm going to show you the income statement and this is what the income statement would look like for for this enterprise fund so let's take a look at the income statement look you have three heading and the name of the statement is statement of revenues expenses notice the word expenses not expenditure and changes in net position so first we have our operating revenues 1.8 million from customers and 140,000 for the uh, hookup cost expenses 
uh, water, depreciation, labor cost, interest cost, miscellaneous expense, nothing unusual, 1,660,000. Revenues minus operating expenses gives us income from operation, which is 280,000. Then we add or subtract any non-operating revenues slash expenses. We don't have any expenses. We only have non-operating revenues. And in this situation, it's the capital contribution from the TAP fees, that additional 60,000 that was in excess of cost. There was an excess of cost. The tap fee was an excess of cost. Notice, you might be asking, <laughs> they all the 200,000 went on the income statement, on the statement of revenues and expenses. Yes, they did. But the 140 is part of revenue and the 60,000 is part of the uh, considered capital contribution. So you need to differentiate between the two. So the total income for this period is 340. Then you add the change, the, you add the um, uh, income to the beginning balance, which was zero because this is a new enterprise. So the ending balance is 340,000. So hopefully, the, once again, the only thing that's unusual, and this is the capital contribution here and the tap fee line, hopefully you understand how it works. Remember the tap fee, the actual cost is considered revenue, but also this gets added to property, plant, and equipment. The amount gets added to property, plant, and equipment. Now the statement of net position or what we know as the balance sheet. We have the current asset cash of 250. We should have cash of 250. Account receivable of 300,000. Total current asset of 550. Non-current asset, we have cash that's restricted. Notice we have cash and restricted cash. We have two types of cash. This cash is restricted. Remember when we issued that bond, it was for 6 million. We spent 4.5 on the purchase of the uh, of the uh, of the equipment. Then we added 0.5 as additional contribution. So we still have five. We still have one million from that bond. One million. One million. That's restricted for property, plant, and equipment. Then we have property, plant, and equipment for five million one hundred and forty. Uh, we have accumulated depreciation three hundred and fifty. Equipment minus accumulated depreciation gives us the net capital asset or the book value of the asset. So this is our total non-current asset, 5,760,000. Then current plus non-current gives us the total of total assets. We have bonds payable of 6 million. Now we need to take a look at our uh, net position. Remember net position, I explained this in the prior session, will have to be separated into three components if that's the case. One is invested in capital asset, net of bonds payable. And here what's happening, we have more liabilities than the capital asset. Remember, we have not used all our all our cash yet or why to purchase asset. Therefore, what's going to happen, we're going to take the assets on the books, the assets on the books, okay, this amount here, so 5140 minus the depreciation, minus 350, that's going to give us the book value with 4,790,000. Then from this amount, we subtract any related debt. The related debt is 6 million. So now what's going to happen? We have negative equity of 1,210,000. So basically we have related debt that's greater than the assets that we're supposed to have. So we, we did not use all the bonds payable yet, which is, and we did not pay any of it yet. Okay. So that's why you have a negative here. You notice you have negative. The account here is negative. Restrict, restricted, uh, restricted asset. We only have a million dollar of restricted asset, and there is no liability related to it. So we're going to take take the million and put it down here as a restricted asset. And what's left is unrestricted asset. The only thing that we have unrestricted is the cash plus the receivable in this situation. Cash plus account receivable equal to five fifty, and that's the unrestricted amount for under net position. And obviously. Net, net position is 340,000. If you add liabilities, 6 million plus net position, 340, those two should equal to the total asset price fund work. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me, study hard.